Hey everybody, today we're going to learn about the backbone of electronics. You see, microchips, semiconductors, and logic devices all solve problems and create solutions that a normal person could never handle. Let's check it out. Detroit Red Wings. Hi. Oh, hello, Zoe. I'm glad you're here. No. Evolution? No. What are you doing? <sighs> Everything in the lab is breaking today, and I forgot my password to the mainframe. JD is out, so I called you in to help jog my memory. Now my safety question for my password is, what's the most important thing? Well, I can't remember. Well, what can I do to help? Stop distracting me so I can think. Okay, I guess I'll start trying to Power organize play. the lab. Hey, where's JD? I sent him to Xilinx. He should be calling in with a report any second now. Or soon. Hunter? No. Oh. Hmm. Here's JD now. Juice. My hair's cool? Alright. <laughs> hey guys, we're here at Xilinx and we're gonna learn about semiconductor chips. Hello? Hey, JD, what's the password for the mainframe? The password? Yeah, I wrote it on my hand. Ooh! Oh! Ooh! Yeah, uh, I kind of washed my hand. Um, well, let me see what I can find out here. Anyway, semiconductor chips are in all types of devices, like this phone, this watch, pretty much all types of electronic devices. Hi, JD. Hi, Matt. Couldn't help overhearing you talking about um, semiconductors. Um, Xilinx actually makes all kinds of programmable logic devices that go into a lot of different kinds of electronic equipment. These range from wireless space stations to automotive systems and even things in digital video cameras, still cameras, and surveillance cameras. The devices that we make are called field programmable gate arrays or FPGAs. Oh, so you said surveillance cameras. Uh, what types of smarts are in surveillance cameras? Well, a surveillance camera not only records video, but it also detects objects in the video so that you don't alarm somebody if there's nothing going on and you don't record stuff unnecessarily. So the smarts looks for objects that are moving in images, like if you're outside of a building and you have a camera looking for people maybe crossing the path of it. Wow. I came to the right place. Do you yeah. think you could help me program a device to recover my uncle's lost password? Well, there's all kinds of different ways we could look at that. You know, I mentioned surveillance cameras, maybe there was a video camera running at the time that recorded him typing his password before. We could use some intelligence to look through that with some programmable logic to you know, maybe see the keystrokes or something like that. Or we could use some of our programmable logic to write a search algorithm that might generate different passwords that you could try. Okay, let's get started. Sounds good. All right. I give up. Hey, Professor, I think I might have a hypothesis that might help. A hypothesis, hmm? That reminds me of something. Tell me more. Well, we know that the password is a combination of letters, right? It could be. Well, what if I just use a dictionary and start from the beginning? <laughs> well, what if it's just random letters, then it won't be in the dictionary? 
so why don't we just start typing random letters? That would be like starting from the beginning every time. Well, I can just start with A and then B and so on, and it's got to work eventually. I mean... You think this is a good hypothesis? Well, let's try it. <laughs> okay, knock yourself out. What's the most important thing? Gravity. No. Carbon. Fingerprints. No. Holy crap. Biology. Okay. I have gone through the whole entire alphabet and it didn't work. Try AA. Okay. Nope. What about AB? Nope. Oh, this well. This is taking too long. I guess this experiment is a failure. Wait. Experiment. 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 Experiment definitely has something to do with it. Guess my hypothesis was wrong. Oh. Well, don't worry about that. I mean, you, you, the hypothesis can't really be wrong. I mean, you could make a good one or a bad one. It's just really like a guess. You know, you just start with a hypothesis and then you test it with experiments and then you analyze the results and... Hmm. See, hundreds of years ago, right, astronomers, they made a pretty good guess. They came up with a mathematical system to explain how the stars and the planets move through the sky. And they would come up with a hypothesis and test it with an experiment and then analyze the results and if it didn't turn out, they'd just make a new hypothesis. And then you test that with an experiment, you analyze the results, and this sort of thinking spread all around the world. And in hundreds of years, people came up with biology and physics and zoology, all, all different kinds of scientists, all use the same method. So as long as you're able to analyze the results, you could tell if it was a good hypothesis or a bad hypothesis. Analysis. Analysis. That sounds familiar. Try analysis, Zoe. Okay. Sorry. Nope. I know we're getting close, though. I know we're getting close. Well, I give up, okay? I'm going to try and organize these boxes. I mean, at least I can tell those apart. Unless, unless you want me to help you in your lab. I mean, I really don't mind, really. No, 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 no. You just stay out in this part of the lab, and I'll see if I can come up with an experiment. An algorithm is just a series of instructions that programmers use to write software. One common problem that people have is organizing data. Say you want to figure out who's the tallest kid in your class. Well, that's easy. You just have everyone stand in a line and the tallest kid is pretty easy to spot or the shortest. But how can you tell if one particular person is taller than another particular person? The only way to do that is to have them stand right next to each other. Now, if you could get everyone to stand in order by height, then they, if, where they stand on the list is how you'd know. <laughs> you'd automatically know. Well, there's a problem, though. You see, you can't get everyone to cooperate with this plan. Instead, you measure each person as they enter the classroom that morning. Now you have a list that has all the information, but you can't tell if one person is taller than another. A sorting algorithm allows a computer to do that for you. Whether it's on the way to school, at school, or online, bullying has become a non-stop threat to our youth today. Is your child being bullied? The National Runaway Switchboard can help. If you're having a hard time, get online or call to chat now.
Donate to Habitat for Humanity Greater San Francisco and let your change become the change a family needs. Habitat for Humanity Greater San Francisco. Building homes and hope in Marin, San Francisco, and the peninsula. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Okay, so this goes and that stays. And this goes. Oh. Hi, can I help you? Yeah, hi, I'm Patty Nation from Silinks. I'm nice here to see the professor. You. Nice oh, to meet you. Um, he's kind of busy right now, but um, have a seat. I'm oh, Zoe. okay, nice to meet you. So, how have you been? Good, how are you? Very fine, thank you. So, maybe you could help us out while you're here. Well, what seems to be the problem? Well, the professor can't remember the password to his computer, so do you think you could help? Can't remember his password? That sounds like quite the problem. You know, at Xilinx, we specialize in creating technology that helps people solve problems using our logic devices. Oh, you know, that's what JD was just explaining to us, that Xilinx creates FPGAs, which are programmable devices. That's correct. But that's only one aspect of what Xilinx does. Not only are we a technology company, but we also take pride in being a member of the community, a global member. It's really great that you're so involved in education. And what schools has Xilinx worked with in the past? Well, right now in San Jose, we're working with Oster Elementary School, Union Middle School, and Lee High School. But starting mm -hmm. this fall, we're going to expand what we call the global educational ecosystem. It's a model where we bring in nonprofits to help with the schools, and we do a whole host of of programs and projects. That's cool. So what kind of projects do students work on in the classrooms? Well, it's a variety of things from art and literature and theater to the STEM initiatives where there's hands-on science with YSI and they mm -hmm. get to do experiments and they get to see live animals. Cool. Um, we are doing projects like Project Lead the Way. Um, we actually do a whole host of other things that where you actually get to learn about our devices, um, our, our, our programmable logic. So. That's really neat. Um, how could I get involved in something like that? Well, what kinds of things do you like? Um, I like theater and singing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Do you have a lot of books at your house that you're no yes. longer using? Well, we do this great program every other year, and it's called Pro uh, the African Library Book Project. And what we do is we partner with our schools, and what we do is we collect the books, and then based on what the books are, we sort them according to specific categories because in the villages that we send these books to in Africa, mm -hmm. they have a limited reading level because yeah. they don't know of our culture and our technology. They're probably not any higher than an eighth grade reading level. And for every thousand books that we sort and collect and we ship to Africa, it opens up a village library. It's amazing. It's great fun. You, I yeah. think you would love it. And if you could champion it at your school, mm -hmm. then that's something we could do and we could ship books to Africa. So far, we've opened 16 libraries. That's so great. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of cool projects, um, I wonder what JD found out at Xilinx. So I don't know. Should we look here. and see? Yeah. Hey, what's up, y'all? Matt taught me how to use the programmable logic device to find out Professor's lost password. You see, once I go into the lab and I download the free software, then I can find out when he typed in his password and what he typed as the password. Piece of cake. Cake. That was a good cake that I had last week. <sighs> I wish I had more. Anyway, let's go. Wow, I can't believe JD got to learn about all that cool stuff. Jealous. Jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Xilinx looks like a really interesting place to work. And um, you mentioned Project Lead the Way. Mm -hmm. um, and you said it helps educate students in middle and high schools. But what happens after high school? Well, after high school, 
the intent is, is that the students have enough of a taste or an interest in the principles of engineering or aerospace design that they'll want to pursue that when they go on to college. And so we have a nice partnership with San Jose State and the national leaders of, of Project Lead the Way. So in order for us to continue and nurture those relationships, we're going to be building this year a cohort. Matter of fact, earlier today I was um, awarding some scholarships for students cool. that want to go into the science and technology areas. And then we'll continue to speak to them and say, hey, did you know that you know, if you study in this field, come back, Silings might have an internship during the summer. And then if you graduate, come back as a new college grad, there's openings. That's awesome. And so we like to nurture high school students and have some work study programs where they get to learn about IT, which is information technology, or learn yeah. about our boards and our kits. That sounds really interesting. But what if I'm not a total math whiz, or um, well, don't tell the professor, but I don't really want to be an engineer. That's OK. Neither am I. <laughs> but there's lots of different parts of a business that need people that are not just the engineers. Mm -hmm. My background's in sales and marketing. Okay. We have people that work in HR and finance. You know, a lot of different parts that make a company go round. And I think that I, that's an opportunity for everybody. Yeah, I had no idea there were so many careers you could choose from. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do at Silence? Well, my official title is that I'm the manager of corporate and community engagement, okay. but most people call that community relations. Mm -hmm. And what I get to do is I get to do team building, where I pull teams of our employees together, mm -hmm. and we do a project as a unit, and we just built playhouses for Habitat for Humanity. Oh, really? And Tell me about that. Well, we got to paint them and assemble them and decorate them, and then we contributed toys to go with each playhouse. And the really cool thing we did this time is mm -hmm. that the inside wall of one is first painted with a magnetic paint. Uh -huh. I didn't even know there was such a thing as magnetic paint. I didn't paint. either. <laughs> and then the next coat on that same wall is a black chalkboard paint. So oh, that where you can write on it. You can write on it so you can put your magnets on it and write on it. So it gives the kids oh, a chance so to explore cool. and be creative and you know a little private time for themselves. Most yeah. of these houses that we've been doing lately are going to children whose mother or father are in the service and this oh, is something so for sweet. them to have to keep them busy and happy while their moms or dads are gone and yeah. couple with our moms. That's awesome. I had yeah. no idea there were so many ways to be involved with technology. Mm -hmm. And so where can I go to find out more about Project Lead the Way? Well, you can always visit their national website. And mm -hmm. there's a Project Lead the Ways all over the United States. Um, in our case, you could visit the, Zano the Xilinx site in San Jose. You could visit San Jose State's website. San Jose State has a, a local unit here where they're working to train more teachers about Project Lead the Way. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, it's a math or a science teacher that already has an understanding of um, scientific principles and then they will take this two-week boot camp and they learn how to teach students engineering so whether it's um, on an IT track or an aerospace mm -hmm. or, or uh, electrical engineering which would support our product technology yeah. that's what they do and so they learn how to do this and then they teach their curriculum in the schools starting and some of them are starting in we have a school in Colorado they're you know, sixth graders learning principles of engineering and design oh, wow. concepts yeah it's amazing what they, they're really doing cool. yeah they do their sketches and they have to understand how to do a, a book where they actually keep all of their engineering drawings and all oh, their I don't documentation know if be able to do that uh, <laughs> that's, cool. that's, how you, that's why you learn <laughs> well thank you so much for coming by and sharing all of your knowledge with me but I should probably get back to helping the professor with his password issues all right, well good luck with that well thank you thanks very much nice to meet you you too NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds.
Oh. Oops. Yeah. Sure. Let's go. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. What was that password? Warfield. Reuben. Einstein. Newton. Newton. You're thinking too hard about it. Just relax and you'll remember. Maybe we can do something to take your mind off of it for a while. Well, maybe you're right. I just learned about logic devices, so maybe we could build a device that'll help us uncover the password. Logic, you say? Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Well, let's put that newfound logic to the test. Hey, I've seen this stuff before. Mm -hmm. How are we gonna build a logic device out of this? Well, as you know, logic and reasoning go hand in hand. Uh, if this happens, then that occurs. Uh, and <laughs> I want you to, look, build a device that uses logic and reasoning and brute force. Logic and brute force? Sure, why not? And as you know, you can map every single function and its possible outcome using a flowchart. Okay, if you say so. Logic, reasoning, and brute force. Reminds me of gravity. You've had plenty of time. Did you do it? What have you done? I think so. I observed the nature of all the pieces and how they can fit together. Good, good. Okay. I formed a hypothesis and used gravity as brute force. Ooh! Newton! <sighs> okay. I only have to perform my experiment to confirm my hypothesis that this will work. Hmm. Okay, let me look over this, uh... Let's see, this, this starts here and leads to that, which is a gravity with the inertia here, um, and that's Professor, a resistance. why don't I just start it and we see what happens? Okay, all right, I guess that'll work as well as my complex analysis. you've done? No. You just made a Rube Goldberg machine. These are awesome. They, scientists all over the country make, make these things in competitions to like outthink themselves. Hey, we might be onto something here. What's the most important thing? What's the most important thing? The most important... Hey, what's up, Zoe? I'm back. And check this out. Cool. Uh, what is it? With the logic device plugged in here, we can find out the lost password. Oh, cool. Does it use the brute force method, like in my hypothesis? Kind of, except not really. Check this out. Whoa, it worked. So my hypothesis was good, but my experiment wasn't good enough to prove it. You see, these devices make it possible for people to do things more efficiently and more effectively. And you can find more devices like this one at Xilinx. I remember!
remember, I remember, it's scientific method. Scientific method, no caps, no spaces, just scientific method. Uh, thanks, but we got it under control. We? I just went to another field report, came back, saved the day, long story short. The professor forgot his password and it was crazy. Him and Zoe were giving up, but it didn't faze me. Learned about semiconductor chips, it was amazing. And these chips solved the problem the professor was facing. They're useful and they make electronics faster. They organize and they help find the password. Yeah. Hey, make sure you guys check in next time when I go find out about the Wi-Fi in the clouds. This is a place you have got to see for yourself. See you guys next time.